earlier in the week, I at last beheld the latest Chris Nolan Batman fucking dissertation. And I want to just preface what should be a meaty rant by incontrovertibly stating the following up front. The Dark Knight Rises is not unwatchable. On its worst possible day, it's still like a 6 or a 7 out of 10 at the absolute worst. As far as the dregs of modern cinema are concerned, it's a more than passable chapter in a great big figurative tome entitled Thoroughly Average Films. I could say the same for other superhero flicks, even more recent fare like Spider-Man or Iron Man or a half dozen other links in the writhing meat train that's currently thrusting its way past all of our TV and computer screens at present. Look, I love comic books, an affection incidentally that doesn't extend to film really. I like a few films a whole lot, and the rest I think are shit. Regardless, I think we're all hip to the fact that Hollywood is dangling from the superhero film adaptation teat like the nipple ring of an impossibly obese cunt. The simple fact is The Dark Knight Rises, my own anti-cinematic proclivities notwithstanding, has more problems than an algebra textbook, alright? Going into the film after watching almost every trailer available, I recall initially being really struck by just how many characters there are, most of whom, presumably at the time, had their own subplot, which immediately triggered my narrative gag reflex. Simply put, too many characters in too short a film is usually cinematic suicide. And don't doubt me until you view Joel Schumacher's magnum opus by the name of Batman and Robin. Yeah, well, it's my grim duty to report that at the time I had no idea how right I actually was. This film's glut of ancillary, effectively irrelevant supporting characters from Catwoman to... I can't believe it's not Nightwing necessitates that the central conflict of the film that is Batman vs. Bane doesn't even materialize until we've nearly eclipsed the one hour mark, folks, okay? And don't excuse that as being formed from narrative necessity until also noting the film's full runtime of just over two hours, meaning nearly half of the film has elapsed by the time the audience is at last generously provided with a reason to give a drizzling shit. That's screenwriting 101, Mr. Nolan. You hook the audience from the opening scene, and you do not relinquish their balls until the credits fucking roll. I happen to be of the opinion that most of the Nolan trilogy is apocalyptically over-fucking-rated, but I'll say this for The Dark Knight. That film's plot was tighter than Jerry Falwell's ass in a prison shower, alright? Not one character could have been dispensed with. They all served a function, and that function was to further the central conflict of Batman versus the Joker. Conversely, more than a third of this film's opening act is devoted to a Catwoman character who could have, with relative ease and to the everlasting benefit of this film and franchise, been written out of this film entirely. I'm not sure which was more violently shoehorned into this film, Catwoman's narrative role or Hathaway into her fucking outfit. Are you ready for one of the first lines she delivers as the character who single-handedly redeems this film? At least according to the bleeding fucking sheep that have pronounced this to be as near to a perfect conclusion as is humanly possible? Yeah. Are you prepared for this? Is your body ready? Yeah. She says, and I quote, Cat got your tongue. Cat got your tongue, motherfucker. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's also one of the first lines that comes pouring out of Halle Berry's mouth during the distilled celluloid brilliance that was 2004's Catwoman film. Yes, that's right, fanboys. Your cinematic savior is lifting dialogue from a superhero film that makes the original Fantastic Four movie look like Gone with the Fucking Wind. So why did they jimmy-rig the entirety of the plot to better accommodate this walking, talking, narrative superfluity? My working theory is that Chris Nolan needed a female lead because he really wanted to have his own counterpart to the 1940s noir classic The Big Sleep. He wanted that snappy, acerbic, flirtatious dialogue between uh, Humphrey Bogart and, I think, Lauren, Lauren Bacall, I think it was? He wanted that acerbic dialogue that just made every frame of that film fucking smolder with sexual chemistry. The problem... The problem, in my opinion, is that Christian Bale is no Humphrey Bogart, Anne Hathaway is no Lauren Bacall, and Chris Nolan, I think that movie was directed by Howard Hawks, Chris Nolan is no Howard fucking Hawks, alright? But I could forgive, I, I could forgive all of it, if the film at least had the gumption 
the butt fucking stick to itiveness to actually see its own central conflict through to its own logical end. Instead, in the final frames of this film, literally 10 minutes before the final credits roll, we learn that Bane isn't the real bad guy, rendering the last two hours effectively immaterial, and we're then expected to invest fully in the new conflict of the film merely because it was alluded to two butt fucking movies ago, knowing full well that the entire brand new story arc will have to be wrapped up over the course of the next 10 goddamn minutes. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's the exact same problem that Mass Effect 3's laugh riot of a fucking ending had. By abruptly changing the central conflict of that game from Commander Shepard versus the Reapers to Commander Shepard versus the dichotomy of organic existence, and then foisting a choice upon the player that had all the relevance of a Family Guy flashback, they kneecapped their own story and drove their entire audience screaming into the fucking hills. Once again, it's not an unwatchable film, alright? It's slick generates an interesting concept or two and is occasionally fun to look at, but it's still an objectively and deeply flawed film, and even in a franchise as unjustifiably extolled as this one, it's an unambiguous disappointment on all levels. One need look no further than the fact that every protagonist in a Chris Nolan film just happens to dress and wear their hair identically to how Mr. Nolan does in real life to confirm the ageless adage that it takes the ultimate egotism to form a fucking film director. But if Christopher Nolan fancies himself a cult leader, then The Dark Knight Rises is the closest he will ever come to Jonestown. But fuck that, I never liked Kool-Aid anyways. I'm Razorfist. God, fucking speed.